Hi, this is Steve Alder in the Avalon Ward. In this family history segment, I'd like to demonstrate how to identify and reserve names to take to the temple for temple work. To begin with, we'll sign in as usual onto familysearch.org. After doing so, I'll trans traverse over here to the family tree tab and scroll down to person, which will take me to my home page and show myself here and bring up my details. And then by scrolling down again, as mentioned before, you'll see myself as a parent with my wife and children on the left, and then myself as a child with my parents on the right. If I click just once on my father, you'll notice that it is a shortcut that demonstrates what his temple work status is. Gray indicates that his work is completed, baptism, confirmation, initiatory, endowment, sealed to parents, sealed to spouse. We find the same finding under my mother. This is again a shortcut. And if I go now directly into my father's profile by double clicking and then going by another click on his name, I bring his profile up. And now under this ordinance box, it allows me to see more complete information, including when those ordinances were performed. As I pull over to the far right, you'll notice the word legend. I'll click on that and bring down showing the four options that indicate as shown on my father, gray is the work completed. B is go, that means select and you can take those names to the temple. That blue color is in progress, meaning it is reserved, ready to be taken to the temple. And then orange indicates that the work is not available. Let me give you an example of that ladder. I'm gonna go back down to my profile, back to Steve. And under my ordinances tab clicked right here, you'll notice that everything is orange. This is because I'm a living person and even though my temple work is all complete, it is private and you cannot visualize the temple work findings on a living person. This often causes concerns to patrons using familysearch.org because they're concerned they can't see their ordinance dates. But once I'm deceased and my deceased name is put into my record, then that will all go away and those will be filled in with the dates that they were performed. Let me give you an example now of another ancestor. I'm gonna go up to my great, great, great grandfather. You'll notice here immediately that he has a green name by his name. I'm gonna pull that up. And as we scroll down, you'll see some variety of findings. The baptism confirmation and initiatory were performed at various temples a few years ago. The endowment and down here ceiling to spouse were reserved by this brother a number of years ago in 2016. However, after approximately two years, that reservation status will expire. Even though he shared that with the temple, I now have an opportunity to reserve those and do that work for myself. The ceiling to parents has also been reserved. That's been reserved by me, and so that is still available and on my waiting list. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and reserve these names. I'll go up to the word request at the top. It's letting me know that even though those have expired, that individual submitted them to the temple to have that work done. Because of that special submission status, I can override the temple doing that work but in this case, I only have 90 days to get that work done. I'll go ahead and request that anyway. There'll be a church policy statement, which I will accept, indicating that I know that I wanna do that work. And once that's been prepared, now you'll notice that that work has all been reserved by myself down here and that I can get that work done. Lastly, in printing those names, if I go back up, to family search at the top and go all the way over to temple. On the main temple screen, I can go to my reservations. This has been designed newly in the last couple months, so this will look different to a lot of people uh, familiar with family search. But you'll notice the top name is this great, great, great grandfather that I just did the work for. I will select those and indicate that I would like to print those. 
I can either reserve that as a barcode for later use on a sheet of paper, or I can go directly and print the cards, which I can take to the temple. I will click on that name uh, to print those cards directly. I will continue. I'll indicate that I understand I have paper in my printer. And as I continue then, they are then appear and ready to print, which I will now do. And those are printing. And so on my printer, ready to be cut up are those cards, which I will go and get in just a moment and have them ready to be taken to the temple. I will then be prompted, did that print okay? Are you sure you're done? Um, I will say, yes, it did work okay. And now the status has changed, showing here that they have been printed. I'd like to introduce one more new feature on the Temple Family History. Up at the top under Temple, you'll notice a tab that says Ordinance is Ready. If I click on that tab, it immediately takes me to a shortcut where if I'm going to the temple, it will then uh, screen and look through my family history and find names for me to do in any of these ordinances. For instance, if I am on my way to do initiatory, if I click initiatory and view it, it will bring up five names for me to do immediately at the temple. I'd like to point out that there are probably a lot more than five, but the ordinances ready tab is designed as such that it'll only allow you to print as many as the temple assumes you can do on one visit. What's nice about this tab is, is that this also shows up on your phone. If you go to the temples tab here at the top to ordinances ready, you can literally, while you're walking into the temple to do baptisms, push on that and then walk into the temple and you are then ready to get those printed and do that work the moment you walk in. Thanks so much for joining in today.